Hello, everybody. How are you? It's so good to see you. So here we are, another Art Quilt Thursday. And I actually got some work done on the quilt this week. So I may seem a little sluggish or tired today, but I've got to be honest. I was up way too early. There was an opening for my pups at the groomer. So I had to get them in early this morning. So I'm just a little tired. But let's see what we've got going today for this. And oh, look at y'all. Lisa and Cheryl. Betty, I'm so glad to see you before I left the other day. And Pat. Oh, it's so good to see all of you. Laura and Mary, Marsha, oh, Barbara Smith. It is great, great, great. Yeah, hopefully Mary's daughter is still getting well. I'm crossing everything for her. All right. So today I made sure to have all of my pattern drawn on the foundation as well as the paper pattern. So let me show you that first and then I'll show you why that is so important. Okay, so let me bring this lamp here, bring y'all over here and here we go. Okay, now here is our pattern on the golden threads paper or whatever translucent paper you have. That is so important and I'll show you why, okay? And I even, since it's just a pattern, I wrote a few notes on it so it would kind of tell me what I'm doing. Oh, good, I'm glad she's better, Miss Mary. Because once you start putting the blocks of color in, you're going to cover up things. It's just the way it is. So if you have the top pattern, then you will never lose what you're doing. So let me show you. I went ahead and put in my sky. Now, honestly, if you look at the pictures, the sky comes out kind of pale compared to everything else. But this is, this is a piece of art representing our house, and I want it to be pretty. So you know what I was thinking? I thought to myself, you know what? I want a blue sky. It's, this is, if I just wanted a photograph, then all I would have to do is have a photograph. But since I want, since I want it to be a home that I'm very attached to, I thought, aha, I'm going to, because I really thought about it. I could have just put up a pale white, but I really want, and you know, by the time I put all of the trees that are behind the house, it's going to dampen it down anyway. Now, these fabrics I just laid on here because I want to show you how I decide to put what I put where I put it. Now, I showed you last week, my house is a kind of green, but it's got a hint of blue to it, so it's a real pretty sage. But while I was pulling out the colors to do this, I realized that my colors were all in the same family. And if I do that, thank you, Marsha. If I'm not careful, it's all going to kind of blend. So what I did is went to my closet and picked a blue, I mean a green, that had a hint of blue to it. And that way this will stand out. And I think I will like it a lot better. But now that I'm with you, I'll show you. This, this is how I work. I'm very much a collage, um, a collage style 
quilting. So I'm going to go ahead for right now. But you see why this is so important? Because once you cover all that stuff, it's like, oh, that's right. So what I'm going to do right now, I want to take good care of this pattern because I need it. I am just going to carefully fold it up and tilt it out of the way. I don't want anything to happen to it. But these can all come off. I just use tape and a little touch of school glue. Now, if you want to, you can very much, you can easily um, use um, fusible interfacing and cut out the pattern pieces and iron the fabric to it. And then that way, once you iron this down, it's glued down. I tend to like something a little less organized, a little less planned. And so that's why I like to sit. I like to kind of pretend I'm a kid again in elementary school and we're having art class where we cut out some fabrics and we've got some glue and we just have fun. So that's where... That's the idea that I'm going with today. That's my favorite, favorite kind. I've got all these little pieces over here cut out. But this is my favorite way to do it. So I know I'm going to cover up all these bushes and things, but luckily it's on the pattern. Now, now that I am pretty certain that this is exactly because I, I did a dry fit and... This and what I do is I leave a little bit to overlap and underlap. And Jody was the first person who taught me this because if, as long as the color on top is not lighter, you've got to be careful sometimes because if you put a lighter color over it, it is liable to show through. You don't want it to bleed through. And luckily, I've got white around the windows and white near the roof. But, but, um, I have dark shutters that hopefully will give me that little extra space. Now, I'm going to pull this up just a touch because I want to make sure it goes all the way up to the white gutters. Now, to fit these in, okay. I take and I fold this back and look where the next line is that I have to do. Let me see if I can get us in a little closer. There is a line here of the trim on the house. And I know the trim is white, so it I've got to be careful about it showing. But I fold it back to the right placement, run my fingernails along it, and then I can take my little snips here and just cut along that creased line. Just like this. And I just love, you could use school glue. The only thing to remember about school glue is school glue takes a while to dry. Now, the good thing about school glue is it allows you to pull it back up and then glue it back down, where this glue is pretty serious stuff, and it is, if you can get the piece of fabric up, but it's probably going to be pretty gnarly looking, so unfortunately, in that case, you're probably going to want to put um, a new piece of fabric there, because to pull it up, it's really tough on it. I'm going to try something right here. Now, let me see. Okay. All right. Let me try something. I'm trying to decide whether I want to put the gutters up now or wait. I might just block out the larger parts of color and then come back in. Yeah, I might wait on this. I was just going to see how that looks. 
But what I'm going to do is right now I'm going to block in the house. Then I'm going to come back and put the roof. Then after I and see the roof line is up here. And but what I'm going to do is make the roof on top of the sky. I try to put the darker ones on top if possible. So, you know, I can go ahead. Let me, where, what did I do with my roof line? I know it was here just a moment ago. I'll find it. Okay. Come on, Mr. Roof. I know it's here because I, oh, it's right here in front of me. I told you I was tired today. I'm going to take my pictures of the house. Let me zip back out now. I'm going to take the, the pictures that I'm using as inspiration and just sit them there to kind of remind me. Now, sometimes you might have little threads and stuff. Go ahead and trim those. You don't want them telescoping through your work because you are working hard on this and we want it to look nice. Making sure my fabric's in the right place. Up high enough that the trim will barely cover it. So my next piece is this one. And so I put it up here. And I'm going to have a little white piece right here below the window. But I think this will work. Also, I'm not sure where my bushes are coming. But watch what I'm going to do. Anytime you join a couple pieces of fabrics together on something like this. I could cut one entire piece of fabric, but I'm going to have different shades in different places. So what I did is I just cut that line out. Let me see if you can see it. I cut it out with a little bit of a swirl. And the reason I did that is so it will blend better. Okay. So now I'm going to put this right up and under the gutter. Put this right here. Make sure it's in the right place. Looks like it needs to come up just a little bit more. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and put a few dots of glue to hold it so I can get the top part trimmed just right. All right, this has to come up a little bit more. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to come back up. This line, remember, has to be pretty accurate because the trim is white, and I don't want it to show through. So I'm just folding it back and with my fingernails, creasing it really well so I can make sure that I get it just the right size. If worse came to worse and you cut it crooked, you can always get a little pe more piece of fabric. The one thing I love about landscape quilts is that they are a very economical way to use fabric. It doesn't take much. Scrap bags are great for this. Okay, so now I have that part glued on. And I always like to go in first and block the color in. Now, I'm changing colors right here. I had a medium blue-green, and now I'm going for a darker one. And I'll show you why I'm doing that. Because the porch right here that sticks out is shading this part of the house. So what was a lighter green here is much darker right there. So this way... I, and this is why I'm using cut pieces, but this way I can go ahead and I'm going to cut a curvy line again to join. And then I can come right in, fit this in, and it doesn't have to fit along the bottom. It doesn't have to be perfect down here. I may cut a little bit off or the bushes will cover it. Okay, so I'm coming here. I want these lines to be nice and stable, so I'm going to put some glue under that. Now, you might wonder, why do I not like to use iron-on fusibles to do these? It seems like it'd be easier, and 
a little more permanent. But the thing for me is I don't like doing the thread work through the fusible glue. I've never had good luck with it. Some people do just fine, but my sewing machine does not like that glue. The glue builds up on the needle going up and down through the fabric, and then it gets so glommed up, it's a mess. So, okay, well, here we go. Now I'll put this glue down. All right, so now you can see where is the where do you put the trim for the windows? Where do you put the shutters exactly? Now you can't even see the tree, but that's okay because you have your pattern. So feel free to go ahead and start blocking it out like this. Now let me come back and put, I've already cut the eaves on this roof. All right, and the roof is going to come along here. Now it's got a porch and everything. But I will cut that off when I get ready to add the porch. So I may have to, I think I'm going to have to cut some of the bottom of this roof off. Because it's still too long. So I'm just going to do a quick little measurement. Yep. I'm going to have to cut about a quarter of an inch off the bottom. And doing this, I just want to be nice and smooth. You don't want any wiggles and curves or jagged lines because that roof has a pretty strong horizontal point. So let me, I'm left-handed, so I have to see, hmm, how do I hold this so that I can actually see what I'm doing? You know, you know how you do that. Even as a right-handed person, you have to try to figure out what side where should I hold it so I can see it better? All right. Speaking of roofs, we needed to get a new roof this year. And I happened to see a company do the house right around the corner. And so I've driven past several times and kind of watched what they were doing, how they were doing it. And, uh, even though I couldn't do it myself, I know how it's supposed to be done. I wa have watched this old house for over 40 years. So anyway, I really like the way they work and I stopped and got his business card. So hopefully he'll be, I'll get a good bid from him when we're ready to do it. All right. So this is much, much better because remember, I couldn't have this roof come down and I couldn't have the roof block the white trim and gutters because it would show through. All right. So now I'm going to come in here and just do just if I don't want too much glue because you can overdo the glue and have a problem just like you would with fusible. So I just run just a thin little two thin little lines of glue. And then I come in here, make sure I get it just right. Because like I said, with this tacky glue, you have to get it right the first time. All right. So I'm thinking this looks pretty good. And now that lays on top of the sky. So now, because you want to have, you want to have everything buttoned up you know something's got to be on top of this now this the edges that i have still showing i will um let me get this roof cut right i cut it a wee bit crooked so let me fix it real quick and then trim this off at the end okay much much better let me get this up a little bit more. I want you to be able to see it good. Oh, that's cute, Mary. I love, oh gosh, I'll never forget the first house they did. They did an orange countertop. Orange. Oh, my least favorite color, orange. <laughs> so, okay. So now that's looking pretty good. Now I am going to have, let me, let me run this 
let me run my fingernail here because these pillars on the porch are white. So I'm going to have to be careful how I bring this green fabric up to them. Most of the time, unless it's a pure white, you don't have to worry. But with pure white, it's tricky. And the bleed through would not be a good thing. So now I'm going to carefully trim this along my fingernail crease. Okay. Let's see. Oops, a little bit wavy there. Let me try to let me try to trim that up just a wee bit. Now, there is a little bit of an area I have missed. I can do several things. I can cut a new piece. I can come in here and grab a little scrap, which I'll probably do this. Put a little glue on the back, lift this up, and then lay it down. This is not going to be a quilt. It's going to go into an art show or anything like that. So I think I will just patch that in. Okay. And then once the glue gets a little bit stiffer. I'll just come clean it up a, a little bit more. All right. So I'm now going to take and put just a touch down here. And I'm not worried when I put my bushes and things in. I'm not worried about overlapping because um, that'll just add. If anything, if it if it gives it any texture, if it gives it any depth, that's a good thing. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and try to do um, I'm going to try to do this window and I'm going to try something. One thing that I've got to do, I'm going. I'm going to make a crease with my fingernail right here on the drawing. It stops up here. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I crease this with my fingernail so I can cut out the exact pattern. Now, if you want to, you can use a light box, and you can draw a fine line with a pencil, whatever you want. But I love this, I don't want to say organic, but it's just a more natural, for me, it kind of harkens back to my childhood. So, and when art classes were so much fun. So, okay. So what I'm thinking of doing is putting this in here like this. I'm going to lay that there for now. But one thing I've noticed is on the photograph, the windows look inside the windows where they're reflecting the light look a little bit gray. So I have this picture, uh, piece of fabric that's an ombre. I think that would work really well and inside the pane. So now I'm going to carefully. Now I know that normally if you weren't watching me, I'd be doing all of the green all the way down. But I want to show you a few things so that you feel a little more comfortable with it. Look, not big enough. Let me do another piece. But I love this ombre because it gives me all the way from black to pure white. Okay, there we go. All right, now that's good there. And then 
I just crease with my fingernail to know how long. This helps me because if I use pencil to draw these, I'm going to get the... Um, Jody's here. Hi, sweetie. Oh, Denise is here. Oh, this is great. So good to see you. So now, okay, this is this is supposed to be the edges are the painted trim and the trim below the window because it's got a um, a good size piece. It's got like a, a wooden part below the window. Okay, let me get this. I have one chance to get it trimmed right. That looks really good, and it fits inside where that trim would be. So then if I come here to this, now I want a bigger piece of this. Let me, here. And what I do is I keep my iron on, and I use my iron to keep all these fabrics well pressed. Because once I glue them down, you'll never really get them pressed again. You know, it's like you, you want it, when you press the fabric, it has a little more body to it. And all right, I could even, if I leave this a little touch big, I could even push it under the window color if I wanted. So let me see. Yes, that looks good. This way, I'll glue it under the siding color. And then the, the, the window glass can go, the gray can go on top. So let me see how I'm doing. All right. That's going to be pretty good. Let me get a little touch of glue. Now, I don't need much glue because I am going to come in here with invisible monopoly thread when I'm done and I'm going to stitch everything down because this is what you call a raw edge, like a raw edge foundation, raw edge app, applique sounds funny, raw edge collage. All right, so now what I want to do is bring in where the window, where the actual window itself is going to be. I'll bring this light gray in and glue it in the right location here. Okay. And let me put a little bit of glue. Then, whoops, I had the wrong color. Okay, the wrong side showing. Just a couple little dabs of glue. Then I'll come in here and I'll put it just where I know the window glass is supposed to be. Okay. Now, you might wonder, well, what about the little panes of the window? Like I've got over here. What about the little panes? I will do that with stitches because it's almost impossible to, you know, to, you can't get a piece of fabric there. So this way I have what will look like the glass once everything is in place. Then I will come in and I will do some outline stitches and I'll stitch where the panes go and where the, the half hash, you know, how the, the, the windows come in two two pieces and this one goes up. So that's how I'm going to handle the window. And just so you know, it will work. Ooh, let me very carefully come in here. Well, I hate to mess it up, but I'll come in here and draw across halfway. And then here you go with the separate Pains. So it will happen. And oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, I love you. <laughs> I love how Denise has the little window. And then there is a little trim around here. And I will take white thread when I do the thread painting and I'll just stitch around to show the little bit of trim below the window. 
But now let's finish this part up. And I'm going to show you, I cut some strips already for my, for my shutters. And even though my shutters, I painted them Charleston green, which is a green that's so dark, it looks black. And I love that, that color. And when I went to the paint shop, I told them, I want a green that looks black. And they went, oh, I know what you mean. Charleston green. Okay. But I noticed that in, in the picture, because the sun's on the front of the house, they're not looking quite as dark. So what I'm trying to do here is kind of balance between, yes, this is fabric. It's not a photograph, but also having it look close enough that you go, wow, okay, that's pretty cool. So that's that's what I'm aiming on. So here was the lighter fabric. Here is a shade darker because it's the shadow of the porch. So this piece, this piece of the shutter right here is going to be the darkest shutter on all the house. And where the sun is shining mostly on this, this end down here, they're going to be even lighter. So I will save my lightest grays for this end of the house where the sun is and where the tree is and the porch shadow i'll use these so let me see which one is my darkest i'm thinking it's this one right here so i'm going to put this here and see now you can have you know you don't want to do a little white line for trim how in the world would you ever get that right so by doing it layering like this and by having the white be the back of the window and all of the trim of it and laying other fabrics on top, I think you get a really cool look. So I want to make sure, and this ombre fabric has some fine, whoops, let me see, I'm blocking the light, has some fine lines on it. See those lines, which help look like the shutter it helps it be more realistic for the shutter so when you're looking at your fabrics don't just look at color also look at texture does it have a texture and i use the same fabric for the roof but i cut this piece with the texture running this way well actually they're both kind of running but see what i'm saying there that this gives texture to the roof and I'll hold that up and show you in just a minute. And then these, this texture looks like the slats on the shutter. So now I'm going to come in here. Let me make sure I've got it nice and rectangular. It's important that some things that you know are very straight. Even if you have to get your ruler and get a very sharp rotary cutter blade in place and Rotary cut it because that is a great way to make sure you're nice and straight. Also, if you need to cut a long piece straight like along the roof, the longer the scissor blades that you can use, the easier. The longer the blades, the easier it is to cut a straight line. So just remember that these snips are great for shortcuts, short little lengths of cutting but if you want to help yourself get a straighter line use your long dressmaker shears something like that okay so the shutter is going to go down to here now i've done that little crease with my fingernail so i can see it at least i think i can let me try that again because on this dark color, it was harder for it to show. So I'll put it even with that. Down here. Do that crease. Okay, now I see it. In fact, I creased it so hard, I think that I kind of separated the threads a little bit. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and just touch a little glue on the back of this. And put this here. All right. Now I talked about 
So there's one of my shutters. I talked about, you know, how to handle the white gutter, the trim. You know, it's got some lines and dimension. I'll show you right here. This also, I'm going to do a strip of white across here. Then I'll come in and um, where the shadows are, I'll either use ink tints or black thread. So now I'm going to get another piece of white and make sure it's very well ironed. And this is going to be a rather long piece. So let me get out my dressmaker shears right here. Whoops. That's not iron good enough. And in, you know what? I'm going to starch. I'm going to starch this because you want that fabric to have a little stiffness because you're going to be putting in a long, long thin piece of it. Let me get it starched, ready to go. Now normally, and I'm going to say this again, sorry if I repeat myself too much, but normally I would finish all of one color and come back and then do all this little fussy stuff. Because to me, this is little fussy stuff. But I want to show you enough where you can see how do I go about really making this look like a house and not a silly, you know, drawing or whatever, a child's play, you know. So now what I'm going to do is, and that's about three-eighths of an inch. I'm going to do a little touch more. That way I can go underneath the siding of the house and underneath the roof. So I'm going to do five-eighths of an inch here. And this time I'm going to go up to the porch, up to about right there. So what I'm going to do to make so I'll know when I've done enough, I'll make a little snip there. All right. So about five-eighths of an inch to have enough to just tuck it under both sides. If you ever have, on doing raw edge, or really this is collage landscape, if you ever worry that it's going to fray, then don't forget about using, oh, here it is. Good old fray check. Fray check's amazing stuff. And it will permanently keep your fabric from fraying. All right. So here is this part of the trim up in the eaves. So I'm going to go underneath this roof section here. Okay. Underneath there. And then I'm going to come down and do under this. Whoops. And that's another thing. Don't glue. Ooh, I glued a little close to that edge. It might be tricky. Um, since I am using, now I'm using the tacky glue, it's harder to pull up. So I may just have to, I may just have to um, patch in a little extra piece. But I, that's the one thing I did need to tell you is don't glue the edges until you know what fabric is going to go over or under. If this gets too messed up, I'll end up putting a new piece of fabric in there. Because I really wanted it to go under, having a little trouble. But I'm even going to have it go under the window trim so I can get 
a smooth edge along here. So that's another good thing to remember. Don't glue the top one quarter of any edge until you're absolutely sure of what goes under, what goes over. Okay. So now that's tucked under. And I'm going to bring over my iron. And for right now, I'm just going to press it down. I'll glue it down later. But this is mainly for um, exact, showing you how to do it. Oh, come on. Come on, little piece of fabric. Let go. I could probably... If I had to, I could probably wet my finger, wet that area, and loosen it just a touch. But, oh, I know why I glued that down, because I put that little patch in right there. I still haven't trimmed that up, but this, this post will cover that edge. All right, so just remember, where do you put things? What's going to cover? What's going to tuck in? Now, right now... This big swath of white along the top looks unusual, looks weird. But once I take and sew the lines in to show the gutter line versus the trim line, then it will make sense because the house looks odd without gutters. That's for sure. Okay. At least mine does because that's all I've seen it as. All right. So now we've done the house. And there are other things we're going to put on. I have a little decorative thing here. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and put this other shutter on. Now, the tree that I'm going to have, the, my maple that's going to come right up here, is going to end up covering most of this shutter. But that's okay. Because... Um, I know it's there, and then when I put the tree, I don't have to worry that I'm going to have a gap because there'll be a tree there to, there'll be a tree partly coming right up. And in fact, I forgot to get my tree fabric. I, where did I, uh, I put the wonderful box from Miss Lisa. It's way down there. So I'll have to show you those next time. But, all right. So now when I come to this end of the house where that sun is shining, let me show you what I picked out for the lightest part. So here was, usually when you're doing shadows, three is good. And it's dark, medium, and light. So, this was the main body I picked out. Here is the lighter one. And then, oops, what? <laughs> oh, I had them here. But I have, where is my darker color? Hmm. Well, I have a darker, maybe I just took out a piece of it. But I have a darker color. See if I left it in the basket. Oh, here it is. It fell on the floor behind me. Okay. Here is my darker. So this is the shadow. This is the sunlight. And this is the body. So you see how you have nice three... Three things. Yeah, and I talked about the sky, too, because I, in the photographs, let me show you. In the photographs, it doesn't come out a blue sky. But I'm not sure exactly if that was the way the sun was coming in and it, you know, flooded it out. But I want to have a blue sky for my house. And this is my artwork, <laughs> but um, I want to have a blue sky, and I'm going to have all these trees coming up behind the house, 
So I think it'll be okay. But I do have paler, more washed out colors that I can come in and put here and there to give it more realism because the sky is not just all this, you know, it, it shades up and down. Okay. So on my house right here, I have fake stone that we put up so that that I have to figure out what I'm going to use. Um, it's, I'm probably, I probably cannot use a landscape fake stone because it will be too sharp and too big. So it's kind of, you see it back there? So I'll probably use some kind of tan pattern, tan with a stripe or pattern. But now, let's see, you know what? This actually, maybe I'll put one little strip. Oh, that's what I'll do. I'll give this an extra shadow line, which is always a good thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over a little bit this way. And I'm just looking at my, I'm just looking at my photograph and mimicking what it's doing. Now this, since the shadow was showing really strong under here, I will take and whoop, let me go ahead and put that down for, for right now. But I will take and come over to mimic the shadow line on the house. Okay. Well, that's real. I like that. And it kind of hides that patch I did. So if you look on this picture, you can just see where there's a deeper part of the shadow at the top. So I think this will work really well. And then I think let's come on in. Well, I want to do this before I put on my porch because I don't want to mess up my porch fabric. It's going to be really white and I don't want to mess that up right now. So let's then the stone stops right at this pillar, right behind this pillar. So I'm going to come in with, see it's, the stone stops right in between those two pillars. You can't see it. So what I'm going to do, I know I'm going to be using this light color on this end of the house. So maybe I'll go ahead and put this in. Yeah, and it's, it's all pretty even. It's all pretty even. There are a few little shadows that I'm not sure are going to be worth doing. But from here, let me make sure it's not stone still. Uh, it might be stone. But from here down, I'll use the light one. And this is also a good time. I love using marbled fabrics. Let me tell you why. Because when you use marble fabrics, it gives you the little subtleness that you have with little shadows and little, it just makes things look more realistic. So, all right, I'm looking for a less modeled area. And let me see what size piece I'm going to need. I'm going to need... I was noticing this is a little lighter. That probably should go out on the end of the house. See? Huh. Actually, no. This looks like the lightest. That looks like the lightest section. The end actually looks a, tight, a touch darker. So there may be a tree that's blocking a little bit of that light. So see that? That'll help me know where to put the fabric. Okay, let's see. To kind of map out where 
I want to do the cuts for this. This is not real batik. This is a printed marble. So, and if I have to, if I have to, I can make several cuts because I have like these shutters that are great to hide the seams. All right, so I'm going to come up here because this will give a little bit of the darker part near the edge. Let me see how tall I need this piece to be. Not that tall. So I bring it down to here. Now bring it up and do a crease. There we go. All right. Hmm. I'm going to have to do two pieces because this is just too dark. But that's not a problem. That is not a problem. Like I said, luckily, you've got other things to kind of cover. I'll just make sure to put a post or a shutter right where my seam is. All right. So this way it's a little bit darker. Okay. Now this is, I want this to go underneath the roof. So I'm going to make a crease right there. But I'm going to cut an eighth of an inch further than that crease so that I can tuck it under the roof. Let's see, it's not that hard. That's, that's the best part. Now, I'm going to go ahead and straighten this edge really good because once I glue it down, that's it. And just... Be slow and steady to try to get. Now, you can always use a straight edge and draw a line. I could have used a straight edge and drawn a line on the back. Or I just love guessing it. To me, this is more fun. It's like freestyling it. <laughs> so, I'm going to put that up. Whoop. You know what? I didn't want to do that because... The white trim will be affected. So let me trim off that extra and bring it down because I don't want to turn my white trim into a minty gr pale green. <laughs> All right, so now this is better. This will go down here. There's the side of the house right there. What I'm going to do... Oh, okay. So here's the side of the house. All right. Then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put a crease where the shutter is. And I stop the crease where the house, where the color will go below the windows. So that's how I know how far. It's where that crease stops being sharp. I stop cutting. And it's just whatever you decide is going to be your method of doing this. All right. So now we come back up here. I line it up with the outside of the house line. And I'm going to go ahead and cut. Well, no, I, I, I want it. To continue down just in case by some chance if I don't have a bush there to make sure that I've covered it. I don't want there to, I want to make sure that every opportunity is covered. So I don't want there to be a single chance that where there should be house is not. So I can now make this crease here. So then I know that I will cut across here and that's in the right place. And most likely, some of these decisions I make will be under some shrubbery. But just in case. All right. So now I'm going to have this come back up halfway in the shutter line. So I crease that. And then just cut along that crease.
And by having your line stop and start under something, it gives you a little, you know, it kind of hedges the bet there. And I forgot to iron this, so I'm going to come in. I'm finding that the cordless iron can sometimes be a little pain if I'm doing a lot of things at the, with the stopping and the starting. And uh. All right, this looks really good. So now you can see that it is definitely a lighter shade compared to the dark shadow and then the medium color. And those little subtleties are what Going, they're going to give your um, your house landscape a little more enough realism for you to really feel good about it and enjoy it. Okay, so I've got this one where I need it. Now I have to come and fold it back in the middle of this shutter right here. I stop creasing where I know to stop cutting, and then I come in here, cut this, and where that sharp crease stops, I know stop cutting and leave the rest of that fabric so it can come over and close this up. And I'm just going to put a little dot right there. But do you see how much of the little details that I'm covering up? There's a little birdhouse on a pole here. Here is a little sundial we have out front. And I'm covering them all up. But that's okay. I have my pattern. And that's going to help me fill in everything else. Like this tree right here. I'm covering up the tree. So now I'm up to right here. When I look at this, when I look at this photo... I think that stone ends halfway between these posts. So what I'll do is put a narrow strip of this lighter green and then figure out what fabric I'm going to do here. Anyway, oops, did I not? I forgot to glue down my shutter and now it's falling off. So let's see. And I even look to see, do I put the darkest? part of the shutter up top and that way you know where the sun hits it the sun's more likely to hit it down here than under the eave but I'm going to hold this up to show you what I've done so far and since let me see I am saving all my scraps because They'll some I'll need just a little piece of something. Let me get this thread off the glue bottle so that the lid fits good. I wish they had a better form for those tops because I like to lay my I like to lay my glues on their side, but I've noticed that they still want to leak out a little bit because I lay them on their side. But I lay them on their side so that I don't have to get the glue bottle out and shake it and wait for the glue to come down here. It's already down there. So, but I just make sure I clean it off real good before I put the lid on and still lay it on its side. All right. So now let me show you this. And, but I think we're making progress. I'm hoping in one more week, whoops, all my little scraps are coming off. But in one more week, I think we'll have all of the pieces, the colors put in. I'll work on it when you're not here. And But I think we'll have all the colors. Let me grab these little scraps that fell all over me. Ah, there's my little gutter. <laughs> but I want to show you one more time, too. I'm going to bring you back over here. Sorry about all this movement. But I just want to show you again the beauty of having a translucent pattern is you can come back in and you know exactly where to lay things. Here's my little sundial. So I'll lift this up 
and I'll put it right there. Or any any of here is my little birdhouse, so I'll know exactly where to put that. All right. So I'm thinking it's giving you an idea now of how this is going to work. And it's just a matter of getting your fabric fabrics correct. Because, see, these are going to be all my shrubs. In fact, I've got a lot. I don't often need to have a big pile of fabrics. I know I look ahead and say, hmm, what colors am I going to use where? And then I just usually cut the, the smaller pieces. But now you see the house will stand out. If I had made the house the original colors I thought I was going to, it would get lost in the shrubbery. So I just had to kind of bump up that color just a touch. And, uh, but I, I think it's going to work out really well. And so that's, that's it for tonight's episode. But we're moving. My plan is to have all the color blocked in. And I'll still show you. I might have it all cut out and fitted, but I'll show you how I put it in there. Then we'll start doing the thread painting, the thread sketching. That's when it's going to come to life. Little edges to kind of bring something, you know, um, all the little things. I'm even going to, I think I'm going to do some French knots on one of the bushes that is in bloom in the photograph. So I thought that would be really cool. But I just wanted to tell you upstairs, I have the Alaska top totally done all 12 changes i had to make corrections i had to make totally done hi michelle the quilter and oh hello angela adele oh my gosh it is so good to see you that's wonderful yeah i Mary, thank you about the pushing the cap because you're right. Sometimes I don't push it hard enough. This time I did. So let's cross our fingers. But um, I'm hoping to put the quilt on the frame tomorrow and spend tomorrow um, quilting it. I've been thinking and thinking and thinking. How do I quilt it? It is a busy quilt. It is gorgeous, but it's busy. I noticed on one, I was able to kind of enlarge the picture on one of Edita Sitar's um, Alaska's, and it's got just a random floral, just something soft, and I'm thinking I might go with that. I'm afraid if I do custom quilting, it's going to be too busy. So I'm thinking I might just do a little something and let it be soft. But hopefully, oh, it's so good to see you, hon. Mwah. Denise, you're the best. Thank you. So I'm hoping. We'll see how far I get on it by Sunday. But, oh, and I'll tell you something else. I was cutting the borders, and I have a two-piece border, a dark, small inner border, and then a Jenny Byer outer border. When I was cutting it, I cut the side pieces just, just long enough to, to do the quilt top. I didn't leave enough to do. Oh, what do you call it? Now, see, I'm tired. I lost my word. You know how when you go around the corner, <laughs> angle it? <laughs> I didn't leave enough for that, but I found an answer. So I'll make sure to show you. What did I do when I did a boo-boo on the border? I fixed it. So... All right, everyone, I'm going to go take it easy and eat some dinner and watch some TV and then crawl in bed and not wake up tomorrow morning until I'm good and ready. <laughs> so, Blossom, come here. Oh, she's, I was going to show you Blossom with her new haircut, but she's so tired. She's like, I beat. It was a tough day today, Mom. So y'all take good care and I will see you again next Thursday for the next stage of our landscape quilt because the more we do, the more it's going to come to life. Don't, just trust me. So, and then Sunday, 
I have already written up my agenda. I've got some fun things to show you and got to answer the question. Is Deb going to do hexes? Is she going to break her 20 some year commitment to never let a hexy darken her doorway? You'll see. All right. Take good care. Everyone do something a little special for yourself. Take a moment to read a good book. Um, just do something that makes you feel warm and cozy. Enjoy the rest of winter because it's almost, it's, it's, it's going fast. And I love this time because I can just cuddle in at night. I love the long winter nights now and have something to work on with my hands. I'm a happy girl. So take good care of yourself. Marsha, I always forget to thank you. You are such a joy. You welcome everyone. You support everyone. You are a dear heart. So thank you. Thank you. And I will talk to the rest of you Sunday. Bye-bye, everybody. Take good care.